This is the final strap to be attached to an almost completed lighthouse bag. So there's one attached, plain bind off, another attachment, and I've bound off all the way till the four remaining twisted knit columns. So now I'm going to tuck my needle into the last remaining stitch, into the back of that knit, and through the fabric of the bag itself. Knit the new stitch through, and then bind off the stitch. So into the back of the stitch, in through a nice sort of convenient point at the bottom of the strap with the right hand needle, bring the yarn through both the strap and the stitch, stretch the stitch a little bit and bind off as usual. I'll just repeat that across the four stitches of the knit column and I'm making sure I take a fairly substantial piece at the end of the strap so that it forms a secure fastening and one more to go in through the back of the stitch. I can leave it on the left needle or I can pull, pull the stitch off. Tuck my right hand needle through the end of the strap and bring the stitch through. Bring that through the now twisted knit and bind off. And now the strap is fastened on and I can resume binding off the remainder of the edge using my modified conventional bind off where you both knit the stitches and bind off at the same time. These stitches are actually mounted strangely, they're mounted with their left leg in front so I'm just going in to the front of the stitch as usual but the front of the stitch is pointing in a different direction. I've rearranged the remaining stitches so they're more normally mounted and now I'm going to use the modified conventional bind off which both knits the second stitch and binds the first one off all in one movement. It's faster and it's looser. For more on this check out some of my DVDs. I'm just going to complete the last two stitches of the bind off. Modified bind off is exactly the same as a regular bind off, just faster and looser. And now I have one stitch remaining. I can gently elongate that stitch until the tail of the yarn pulls through. And now I can neaten the joggle. Now the final neatening detail is this nasty little joggle here. I'm going to take the tail of my working yarn, thread it on my lovely darning needle made for me by the jeweler Leslie Wind in Massachusetts. And now the ultimate detail that will join this and make it look perfect all the way around the top is to take that yarn that I pulled through the last stitch, take it around the, the base of the first bound off stitch where it wants to be a V. This is a single stitch graft. Get my yarn tail out of the way. And now if I take my darning needle back in where the yarn came from, back into that penultimate stitch, I can make the final missing stitch and completely smooth away the joggle. Now all I need to do is to share out this little bit of slack yarn here with the adjacent stitches and hide the ends and the top of my bag is now done. This is an example of saving your finishing till the end and letting things be ugly whilst you knit with a view to finishing them really neatly. I've cast on for the start of this bag with a long tail cast on in a contrasting colour wool. It's just eight stitches and the first round was a straight knit eight. Now what I can do, now that I've finished the knitting, is take the tail that I left deliberately to fasten this up and work my way around the circle picking up the right hand side of each of the Australian cousin stitches. Now these are fairly loose because of the yarn overs in the next round so I'm going to pick them up before I cut away the wool. So now I'm going to start snipping away the wool. I could have used a crochet provisional cast on but it was just quicker and easier at the time to use a long tail. 
So I'm releasing the loops, but I've already got the needle in there so they can't go anywhere. And pulling the slack of the tail through. So my needle is already, my yarn is already through this loop. So now I need to go through this one. And this one. And there. You can see how important it is to have a good colour contrast. I could take the time to tease the stitches out one by one. And I'm pulling my tail through. should maybe have counted them, we will be looking for eight Australian cousins because once we've released the edge we, we should have eight loops. And there's the final one. Practice this on a sample before you do it on your whole bag and you might want to initially when you first do this do two rounds of straight knit before you start your increases. It will still give you a perfectly neat result. And now you can start to see this taking shape. All of a sudden it becomes neat and attractive. So I'm going to gather this closed into a little circle like that. So there's our little circle. And now with it gathered nice and snug I'm going to take my tail around one more time. This will be a far more attractive beginning end to the bag than it would have been if I'd just done a regular cast on and left it in place. There would always have been a rather ugly hole or just just a little bit just a little bit messy. But I can take this tail through to the inside and hide my ends and there is a really beautiful completion to the bottom of the bag. This bag was knit with a single strand of county and I can't remember why, but I didn't start it using the contrasting coloured yarn. And I have darned the resulting little hole shut, but it's not nearly as elegant as had I waited and done the provisional edge and then fastened it up later. That would have been a far more attractive finish.